the rapture. In any city, in any country, go to any condemned church you can get yourself to. Bring with you the object of Eden and walk into the church. After taking a few steps in, you will be greeted by an old clergyman wearing an out-of-date monk's robe and hood. He will ask you if you have come to meet the Father and repent for your sins. Tell him only this. I am here of my own God-given will to seek the holder of rapture. From under his hood you should hear a grunt of discontent. Ah, a seeker? He will ask, but do not answer with words, only a nod. Otherwise, the next time you blink, you will find yourself in the frozen wastes of the Antarctic. After you nod, he will slip a hand under your arm and take you to the altar. There is certainly no use in trying to resist him, as it is impossible to stop yourself from going. Once at the altar, you must kneel. The clergyman will leave. When he leaves you, wait a few cautious moments. Once a moment has passed, rise and turn to your left. No matter what religions, church you are in, you will witness a statue of the Virgin Mary, backed by an ornate stained glass window, move as if pointing to something. Carefully proceed towards the statue. Noting that you only step on the floor tiles with cracks or broken edges. The whole tiles are traps. Once reaching the statue, look in the direction it is pointing. If there is a door there, you must quickly leave the church. Nothing but death lies beyond the threshold of that door. Otherwise, you will see before you an icon depicting the infant Jesus sitting in Mary's lap holding a mitre. If you look closely, you will see that the cross on the top of the mitre can be moved, and behind it is a hole. At this point, you should insert the rib into the hole. A soft click will sound through the sanctuary as the rib hits the back of the hole. After the click, you are free to return the rib to your pocket, or wherever you keep it. Once returning the rib to its place, an opaque glass door will reveal itself in the wall. Open the door and walk down the 667 stairs that you will find before you. While walking down the stairs, you must count them. While walking, you will hear whispers tingling in the back of your mind, telling you other numbers. If you lose count, you will find yourself back at the top. Only to repeat the process until you overcome it or go mad. Upon reaching the bottom of the stairs, you will find a large, wide open and empty room. The room will be very poorly lit with so still a feeling that it's as if you could cut the air with a knife. At this point, you will need to produce object number 243. Close your eyes and open the little blue box. Count from one to a number that you feel is correct. Close the box, and then open your eyes. The room will now be well lit, and the marble floors and ceiling will be shining. You will notice that the only decoration in the room is the painting from the Sistine Chapel adorning the walls in a full circle around the room, with the fingers touching above a plain-looking door on the other side of the room. Do not linger for long, but make your way across the room to the door and unlock it with Object 243's key. Hurry! You only have as long as you counted to leave. Otherwise, you will become trapped in this room forever to gaze longingly at the painting. As soon as you are through the door, turn, close your eyes, count to your number again, open the box, and open your eyes. 
You will find the room with the painting as it was when you first found it. Dark and eerie. Close the door and turn to face where you are now. You should find yourself standing in the massive graveyard outside of Jerusalem. From where you stand you will see the Mount of Olives. Yet that will only occupy some of your attention because you will most likely be preoccupied with the ghosts walking around the cemetery. There could be any number of ghosts at one time, but they will be there. After standing for a moment, one of the ghosts will approach you. It will ask you, Why have you come through time to this place? Answer with, I have come to seek the holder of rapture. The ghost will turn away from you and speak again. You must go to Golgotha and take with you what the Jewish take to graves, but make it a special one, and it must be from this graveyard. I hope you are knowledgeable, because you will not be told what it is you need to take, by the ghost or by myself. Once you have found it, you must proceed to Golgotha, the site where Jesus was crucified. Upon reaching Golgotha, you will see the ghost of a centurion soldier standing in front of three crosses, the one immediately behind him adorned with a sign. This sign should let you know that you are neither in the past nor the present. This is a time all to itself. The centurion ghost will approach you, mystical-looking tears pouring down his face. When I saw the way in which Jesus died and the events that followed his death, I was touched with fear, he will tell you. We cast lots for his tunic, he will say as he lifts a seamless and beautiful tunic in his left hand. And we stabbed him with this spear. He will mumble as he lifts up a spear in his right hand. It is my burden to bear these reliquaries until a worthy seeker comes to relieve me of them. You must at this point produce the thing from the graveyard and place it upon the ground in front of the cross. The wind will then begin to blow in a way never experienced by humans. Once the wind stops, you will find yourself outside of the condemned church. The spear stuck into the ground with a tunic hung on it. The spear of destiny and Christ's tunic are object number 266 or 538. Whether or not you believe does not matter when pitted against fate. They will cause the rapture.